Pigeon, a stout seed of fruit eating bird with a small head, short legs, and a cooing voice, typically having grey and white plumage. Pigeons are everywhere. You see them in parks, you see them in the snow, you see them on trees, and also on your head. They are a natural occurrence. However, pigeons are also part of a very important principle in mathematics. But first, let us tell you a story about a family of pigeons. Daddy Pigeon had built a really nice 9 room flat for all his baby pigeons. And all the pigeons lived happily ever after. Not really. One day, the family of pigeons was sleeping in their cozy night room flat when suddenly, a flash of lightning lit the sky and one of the holes exploded and then the hole is no more. The baby pigeon living in that hole is displaced and sadly, none of the pigeons wanted to share the holes with him. So, this poor pigeon flew away from home. He flew and he flew and he flew and he flew and one day he came down to rest at the park and that was where he met this really cool dude feeding, feeding pigeons. This cool dude took a liking for this pigeon and so from that day an epic friendship was born. This is Dirichlet, Johann Peter Gustav Lejeune Dirichlet. On the 13th of February 1805, a baby boy was born into a German family in Dürren. Nobody knew that this world received a genius who later made a measurable contribution to the math world. When this boy grew up, he went to Paris to study math in Collège de France and at the Faculté des Sciences de Paris. Though his family wasn't wealthy, he managed to convince his parents to support his studies in mathematics against their wish for a career in law. In his original research, he proved Fermat's last theorem for the case n equals 5, which brought him immediate fame. He also discovered the pigeonhole principle and defined the modern formal definition of function. Dirichlet took Gauss's position in the University of Göttingen and then passed away on May 5, 1859. His brain is now preserved in the Department of Physiology at the University of Göttingen. To prove our contradiction, we assume that the statement we are making is false. Then, using that assumption, if we reach a contradiction, then the assumption itself must be false, and hence, our statement must be true. So now, given n number of boxes and k number of pigeons, where k is larger than n, we assume that there is at most one pigeon in each box. Now, if we count the number of pigeons in n boxes, along with the assumption that there's at most one pigeon in each box, we have at most n pigeons. Comparing this with our initial statement that we have k pigeons, where k is larger than n, we reach a contradiction. And therefore, the assumption we have regarding having at most one pigeon in each box must be false. This leads us to our pigeonhole principle that at least one box has one or more pigeons. To prove by induction, we first prove that the first statement in the infinite series of statements is true. That is also known as the base case. Following which, we prove that if any one statement in the infinite sequence of statements is true, then the next statement is also true. So now, let's assume that the pigeonhole principle is also true for a certain case in the infinite sequence of boxes. Assume we have n boxes and k pigeons 
where k is larger than n. Since the pigeonhole principle is true, at least one box in the n boxes must contain one or more pigeons. Now, let's introduce the next sequence where we have one additional box and one additional pigeon. This means we have n plus 1 boxes and k plus 1 pigeons. Once again, we can see that at least one of the boxes in the n plus 1 boxes will have to contain more than one pigeon. And therefore, the pigeonhole principle is yet again true for the next case in the sequence. With this and the base case, we have proven the pigeonhole principle by induction. Now that we've proven the pigeonhole principle, let's take a look at some applications in real life. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? Oh, I spent the whole day drawing all the different ways of drawing dots with lines. Check out all the different ways I've created. But what's so fun about doing that? There's only that many ways to join them. Who says there's only a fixed number of ways? Look at this stack of drawings with four dots. There's so many of them. And they are all different. But, but, look at this too. Do you think they are different? Well, of course. I mean, look at the pattern of the lines. Well, look again. If I shift this dot to here, and you end up with the same drawing. So basically, you just wasted your day. What? 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 No! According to Pigeon Hall Principle, given the same number of dots, there are only that many ways to draw them. Suppose we have n dots, and we know that there are only k ways of drawing it. If we draw more than k times, then we know for sure that at least two of the drawings must be the same. Wow! Hey, hey, come here. I want to show you something. What? What's that? Just come, come here. Hey, hey, give me a pair of socks. But you have two colors of socks. Which color do you want? It's alright, any color will do. Just grab any three socks. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Why? Just do it, will you? You always get a pair of matching color socks if you do that. Huh? Really? I don't really believe you. Okay, I should try that. Wow! It's true! That works! But why? Based on the pigeonhole principle, given the two colors, the third sock drawn will have to either be black or red, which would definitely be the same color as at least one of the first two socks drawn. Oh, so... All I need to do is to take three socks at random and you'll definitely have a pair of matching colored socks. Yeah, how cool is that? So let's say I add in a third color of sock. And now we have black, red and orange socks. Do you know the minimum number of socks to pull out from my box at random until I can be sure that I will definitely have a pair of matching colored socks? Is it also three? No. Once again, the pigeonhole principle comes to the rescue. If there are n boxes and we have n plus 1 pigeons, then at least one box will have more than one pigeon. Likewise, we need at least n plus 1 number of socks to make sure that there is at least a pair of matching socks out of n number of colors. So, I will just have to pick uh, n plus 1, 3 plus 1 equals Four! Four socks to get a pair of matching colored socks out of three different colors. Am I right? 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 Rick the Mundo! How cool is that indeed? I like socks. They are so warm and comfy. Make a star.